next time you have an opportunity to make a difference for animals, will you be brave enough? Yes or no? Hello guys, get your activity books out for activity 19. And so in 2009, I packed up everything in Australia and headed off to Africa. I literally left home with only a carry-on bag and a set of boots. And setting up in Zimbabwe, I quickly saw the extent of the problem and I realised it wasn't something I could solve by myself. So I sung out for a long lost friend, uh, Stephen Dean, a guy that we'd been through clearance divers uh, with the Royal Australian Navy and also, also through special operations. And we spent a lot of time together in Iraq as well. And uh, Steve come and join me in, uh, in Zimbabwe. Steve, come over here, buddy. G'day kids. How are you going? Hey, you can stand in a bit lower, mate. <laughs> I don't know. You look, that's, that's, that's the height difference there. How are you going, kids? Okay, me and Steve set up and uh, we got things going. Started training with the Rangers and uh, also knew we needed some more expertise on the ground. And we, we sung out to James Slate, a Canadian Ranger that had been working a lot in, in Namibia. And uh, he had a particular skill set that we needed on the ground. James, come on over here, buddy. Hey, guys. You can stand down lower as well, mate. We don't, now I'm going down low. Jeez. Okay. So the three of us are the main characters you'll see uh, throughout this series, throughout the next 10 weeks as part of the activity book. And we're going to take you through uh, some of the skill sets that rangers learn and the reasons why they learn them and, and, and how those skills are used to protect the animals on the ground in Africa. So initially when we set up, I uh, just started training small groups of rangers and it was very, very similar to what we were doing in Iraq. In Iraq we were involved with training uh, some of the local villagers to become Iraqi police and we're taking these guys that had almost no skills whatsoever and training them up to take charge of this, this situation that was uh, overcoming the entire region. And uh, when I got to Africa I saw exactly the same thing was going on. We had all these people in villages surrounding these protected areas where the animals live and they didn't know how to protect them properly. And what we realised is that unfortunately uh, you need a, a military approach to protecting these animals. When you've got poachers that are moving in and using these uh, military tactics and weapons like AK-47s and axes and spears, you can't go out there without having the right skill set uh, to defend these animals. And so we started using uh, quite a military approach to what we do. And we don't, we don't hide behind anything. And we are an organisation that has military solutions for conservation. And the training that we do provide, yes, there's a group of us that can provide the military side, but there's also a very important conservation focus that comes into, into the training as well. And that just goes to shifting the mindset of the people that we're educating. So they're not just doing it because it's a job, they're doing it because they truly believe in the cause. So getting the rangers to understand things from an ecological standpoint is, is really the direction that we want to go in. If they understand everything that's happening on the property as a whole, that allows us to really get that message across and instill that passion into them that's going to drive them to do their job to the best of their ability. Unless, unless the, the rangers and the communities that live on the, in the surrounding areas of these uh, protected areas, unless they truly understand the value of wildlife, they're not going to have any reason to protect it or try and look after it. Now in Africa, one in 13 people are employed in the tourism industry. Now if all of a sudden all the animals are getting poached and people aren't coming from overseas to spend time in these areas and appreciate nature and, and, and look at these, these uh, key species like rhino and elephant and lion, unless they're coming out and looking at those animals and the, the tourism dollar isn't coming into Africa. If the tourism dollar isn't coming to Africa, then the, the, the standard of living or, or the potential that these people have these families have and these communities have is going to rapidly go downhill and that's what we want to protect we want to make them understand that there's a there's a whole circle of, of life here and they need to you know it all fits together like a jigsaw puzzle and when one piece falls out uh, the whole thing stops working what makes the international anti-poaching foundation so unique is that we don't just try to solve problems from one backyard to the next what we actually do is build industry-wide solutions that everyone can use. So rather than building something that works and keeping it to ourselves, we build something that works and make it available for the whole industry to use. Now at the moment, uh, we're going through the process of developing this international curriculum for rangers. And we've got uh, key rangers from 21 countries who are, who are involved with building this curriculum, all this training material. And I know you guys love learning, you love school but so do our rangers, and that's what we're building. We're building all the tools that these guys need to be able to learn how to do their job in the best way possible. The IPF is very special because we 
look at things from a very multifaceted approach. You have to look at why is poaching an issue, how is it happening, where is it happening, and target these things from very different angles. And coming from a military background, a conservation background, and all different sides, you can then get a better idea of what the problem is, and you can bring in more solutions to solve that problem. So thanks very much for tuning in today, guys and girls. Your teacher is now going to take you through an activity which covers some of the topics that we've spoken about today.